We actually listened to the feedback on the forums in the reviews for LM2, and we've, we've changed the design of the story mode, brought back some elements from LM1, and I think everybody's going to be pretty happy, especially with the return of the portrait or character ghost. Oh, we'll see about that, Mr. Holiday. I absolutely adore Luigi's Furniture Humping Adventures. My first ever memories of having insane hype for a game was when my sister's friend gave this game to my brother and I before we even had a GameCube. I remember holding the game case in my hand, breathing heavily as I wait for my next gen Nintendo experience. Eventually we got a GameCube and Nintendo. <laughs> You probably already know the story of Luigi's Mansion. It wasn't the GameCube launch title people were expecting and got mixed receptions from the community for simply not being a 3D Mario collectathon. Eventually, the community saw the game for its unique gameplay mechanics, chilling atmosphere, and actually putting the green plumber in the spotlight, or flashlight in this case. With the love of the green bro being embraced by Nintendo in the form of making 2013 the year of Luigi, we finally got a sequel to this beloved GameCube classic 12 years after the original on the 3DS. And now finally, with the third entry of the series being released this Halloween, six years after the sequel, it's nice to see that Nintendo embraces this classic and is continuing the series. The original Luigi's Mansion is one of my favorite games, and I think it's the embodiment of short and sweet with satisfyingly dense modular level design providing something unique in each room of the mansion, with secrets of the manor hidden around for the keen and curious eye. I didn't get my hands on the sequel Dark Moon until four years after its release when I finally got a new 2DS XL for Samus Returns. Yes, I love 2D Metroid that much. That, that was the thing that finally made me get a 3DS. During those four years, I made absolutely sure that I didn't see anything about Dark Moon so that I would go into the game completely blind like I was seeing through the dark moon. I really enjoyed what Next Level Games brought to the format. I mean, I blasted through the game in two nights after Samus Returns, of course. But Dark Moon downgraded from the original in a lot of regards, but improved on others. With Next Level Games saying that they're listening to the complaints from Dark Moon, let's take a look at how the third entry of the series is an amalgamation of the best of both games. For this discussion, we'll break each game down into three categories and see how it changed from the original to the sequel, and see how the third game tries to be the best of both previous entries. We'll go over progression, game mechanics, and level design. Dark Moon is a great game, but the most important and arguably biggest downgrade from the original is that Dark Moon's progression is mission-based. EGOD gives you an objective, you do the thing, go back to EGOD for a new objective, then go back to the same area for that objective to actually progress in that mansion. I believe the team did this since Dark Moon was on a handheld and that they believed the more objective level progression would suit a handheld since you can play for a short session, beat a level, and put the game down feeling satisfied and accomplished. Boy, Dodo, you praised the original game saying, quote, satisfying, dense, modular level design. Doesn't an objective-based level progression system embody that? True, but the progression in the first game was simple. Go to a room, clear it, get a key, go to the next room, clear that, get another key. Now imagine if every few rooms you have to go back to EGOT to listen to Yo Luigi, come back so I can talk to you about the door and you got the key so now you can open it and get the next key. And then it's put you right back in the beginning of the mansion every single time. I mean that sort of thing did happen in the original, but it was only after beating a main area's boss, so only like three times in the whole game. The original felt cohesive. As as you continually progress through each room in the mansion, Dark Moon is like after every few keys, instead of just being able to go straight to the door that the key can open, you have to go back to EGAD and select a mission in order to actually open that door. This is aimed to be fixed in the third game by having Luigi progress through each floor of the hotel where the hotel floor is now a level. So you can just go through that area from start to finish like the original game. Even though this would still be a level progression system with each floor of the hotel being split by a cutscene, there's still a sense of cohesive flow as you can go floor to floor and don't get reset to the start of the floor for completing a mission. This is a good change, but with the third game having a hotel structure of going floor to floor, like levels on a world map, it misses what made the progression of the original game much better than the sequel. In the original, it wasn't that there wasn't level progression that gave a sense of cohesion, it was that players are conquering the mansion, and that there are areas in the mansion that the player has access to, but can't do anything about it yet, adding to the mystery of the mansion. Things like running into Madame Clairvoya, but only being able to deal with 
counter later on when you have Mario's dropped items, or things like having access to the breaker room much early on in the game before being used in order to reset the power once it goes out during the thunderstorm. This is what made the progression in the original so good that Dark Moon was lacking. You were learning about the mansion. It was satisfying when you finally complete a room that you were passing for a while now much earlier on in the game. Luigi Mansion 3 has you going floor to floor and who knows how the backtracking will be or if you can go to previous floors to uncover certain secrets you couldn't before. One of the best examples of the beauty of this progression in the first game is constantly passing by a border door in Area 2 and you can see on the Game Boy Horror that there is a, in fact a room there. It really makes you curious about what's inside maybe even look around as to how to get in there. It isn't until you get to the roof in Area 4 that you can go down a second chimney to meet the girl that wets her sheets. Mind you, this is an optional boss but it really embodies what the progression in Luigi's Mansion is about. You're becoming more familiar with the mansion with some Resident Evil level of intercepting pathways and level design. Having something there out in the open but you can't do anything about it yet so you keep a mental note of it until more secrets of the mansion become unveiled or you have access to more areas of the mansion. As you progress through the game you know everything that the mansion has to offer and it feels like it all comes together providing an amazing game feel. Whereas with level progression like in Dark Moon if you find an area that's blocked you know you just gotta beat the objective, go back to EGAD, pick the next level and, and it'll be open. This doesn't mean that it's the worst design for example having Luigi's Mansion 3 be more linear levels like each floor of the hotel because these obviously look like very well designed floors. It just removes the possibility of feeling like you're becoming familiar with the entire complex as a whole. Basically the game doesn't insult your intelligence and thinks that you'll remember these things to go back and figure out how to solve them. Did I mention I really like Metroid? In terms of game mechanics, this is where Next made a lot of improvements. The original had very simple mechanics. Flash a ghost with the light, use the poltergust to suck them up and hold the analog stick in the opposite direction to suck them up. Some ghosts required more than just the light like using elemental upgrades like fire, water, or ice to break their defenses or working around the ghost defenses like sucking up a shy guy mask before being able to capture them. Dark Moon improved a lot on the simple design of the first game like adding a pulse to the suck where you press A to make the capturing a lot more interactive. Also adding things like needing to wait for common ghosts to draw drop their defenses before being able to flash them to capture them. The environment also in Dark Moon was overall more interactive, with the blow of the poltergeist being used a lot more in Dark Moon to manipulate the environment, as well as having the dark light to uncover secrets which is great for things like puzzles or getting treasure for the completionist. The flashlight in general felt better in the sequel as well, with it needing to be charged up before stunning ghosts, making it feel like it was much more timing sensitive. This made it a lot more satisfying when you landed the hit because it essentially had a cooldown. The third game is even adding more mechanics like the plunge and Gooigi, making the environment even more interactable with more opportunities for puzzles and getting things for treasure. I'm so excited to see what they do with this and what puzzles will be provided in the full game. So yeah, I think everyone agrees that Next Level Game definitely stepped it up in terms of game mechanics and that they provided all welcome changes. Finally, on to level design, the topic of discussion that made me want to make this video in the first place. Aside from the mission-based level progression, the thing that Bryce Holiday said that they made like the original game based on feedback was the addition of portrait ghosts. Dark Moon's bosses were all possession ghosts that all looked the same, and although they had personality, they didn't have the character of, let's say, a baby that shrunk you down into his crib. People complained that Dark Moon didn't have these type of portrait ghosts, the next level games want to address this by having portrait ghosts on each floor of the hotel guarding the elevator key to the next floor of the hotel. Where each of the portrait ghosts are appropriately themed to the floor of the hotel, like a film director on the floor of the hotel with cinema set pieces, or a medieval knight on this renaissance fair floor. What the hell is this hotel? It seems like these portrait ghosts will be cinematic or standout set piece moments in the game, similar to the second game, but with the ghosts having more character. Alright, so why am I talking about things like boss battles or set pieces or aesthetic choices like making the bosses have more character, when they were supposed to be talking about level design? That's because next level game completely missed the point of what made the portrait ghost good. Yeah, swapping out possession ghosts for Godzilla on a movie set is a welcome change and is more memorable and has more character. But the thing that made portrait ghosts awesome in the first game wasn't that they were set piece cinematic cutscene introduced boss battles, is that the portrait ghosts in the first game were the levels. Going into a room without a cutscene or anything, just the inhabitants of the mansion going on and doing their normal routines with Luigi slamming 
going in, figuring out a way to uncover their weakness and capturing them. The levels in Dark Moon had Luigi solving puzzles with various gadgets like the Dark Light, and it appears the third game is continuing in this fashion with more tools to solve puzzles on each hotel floor. As Luigi solves these puzzles on each floor, there's just the common mobs that will fight you. The mobs evolve, which is cool, like having these mobs in a hotel staff uniform, which is a nice touch and has characters that would be missed without the common portrait ghost being around. But to me, this will always be the thing I see as a downgrade from the first game. It always kept things interesting when there was a new portrait ghost in each room and figuring out how to deal with them was always engaging. Akin to Monster Hunter, I like games where quote unquote bosses are essentially the level. You're trying to figure out how to tackle them. That is the game. There's no special introduction needed. Can you f off, please? Damn it. Oh! Hitting a punching bag back at a chat or disrupting a game of pool will always be more interesting than just another ghost to plunger before sucking. Next level game took the problem solving aspects of each portrait ghost and instead made the problem solving part the layout of the mansion or hotel and all the mobs or jobbers aside from the boss fights at the end. So these are the levels in the first game and these are the bosses in the first game. This is where I see next level games miss the point of wanting portrait ghosts. The puzzles are still fun in Dark Moon and look awesome in the third game, but it feels like its way of staying fresh was changing the environment when going through each mansion or each floor of the hotel, whereas the original kept things fresh by each portrait ghost. The way I see it is next level games have a hard split between level design or puzzles and combat. Yes, the combat between the common mobs in the new games are more interactive, but the original had combat and puzzles problem solving mixed in one with the portrait ghost. Taking away a thick ghost slot from the servers to get him to fight you or getting a bone for a dog to put its guard down. The problem solving was integrated into just basic fights in the original game. And that's what the level design was. I do like the puzzle and designs that Next Level Games is going for, but not every fight that isn't a common mob needs to be a boss fight with some elaborate battle or some cutscene to introduce them. At the end of the day, I'm still very excited to play Luigi's Mansion 3 and the game looks awesome! This video was simply made because the changes made to the design was to address complaints about Dark Moon with regards to the original. The simple concept of the levels being a unique battle between Luigi and the portrait ghost is lost in the newer games. And they're replaced with puzzles they have to solve and go through in the actual hotel or mansion. Some sort of mix would be cool, but what I see from Dark Moon, at least the puzzles are unique. Maybe it would just be too dark to have Luigi going around and capturing anyone staying at the hotel being represented as a real person. It'd also be extremely demanding to have that many unique fights, and it's just simpler to have it as puzzles on the actual floor. That to me will be why I'll always still love the original game. Either way, I'm still picking up the third game day one and will be streaming it over on my Twitch. Twitch.tv slash MrDodo underscore YT. Hope to see you guys all there, and remember to sub with them bells on so you can catch the next discussion or news video. Bye!